So if you, how cool is that? You got that the time is, you know, that's uh, in the background. I never thought I'd see in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that's thinking you. of wanting this kind of stuff when I was a teenager. Well, I could make my own videos on history, and I could do so many things with music and history. And now it's so easy to do. But and that's the thing we don't yeah. we don't we don't document. And in the moment we're like, oh, you know, privacy this and that. But at the end of the day, then we look back and we go, you yeah. know what? I'm so glad that annoying Roman who over documents. Uh, actually did at right. those times, yeah. Uh, this is, uh, yeah as they say, you must have done something right if you remember American Pie and JFK and, yes. and all that stuff. What's crazy is, Comit says, hey Mr. Fanchulo, favorite government teacher, <laughs> Michaela uh, just uh, oh, really? joined us uh, as well. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm going to turn it around so that we can see who actually chimes in and says hello. Oh, okay, and, uh, cool. Uh, that's just the, back, the back camera is better, but screw it. Our people are more important. Uh, sure, absolutely. Wonderful. So, All right. you for those. Do you look in any particular way, or does it matter? Just, yeah, do your thing. Just okay. uh, I promise I'm not shorter than Mr. Vanchulo. Uh, <laughs> this is just because I want to prop just, this up. Uh, visual effects. All right. Okay. Jeremy McTanya. What up, Jeremy? Oh, wow. um, for those of you who don't know you, Mr. Vanchulo, uh, first off, this is my guy. I love you <laughs> to death. Now, you're talking about American Pie. That stuck with me. Um, the lyrics and yeah, what it means. Right? You know, the JFK uh, really stuck with me uh, as well. Cause I There's a God in heaven. The first thing I'm going to ask him is who killed JFK. I need to know. I, want I remember to know. you saying that because I've studied it so much. Yeah, and there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that, right? And, with, um, with you know, it's just uh, somebody said. Some cop said I've studied ten thousand murder cases, and he goes, "You look at a case. Eventually, the evidence all points towards one person." Right. He said the Kennedy case is the only one where it goes out and it points to more and more people. And he said, that tells you right there, something's really funky. Something, right. Something ain't right. Yeah. And Mr. Ventula, I started to get into, uh, you know, as I started to dive, uh, I got into uh, Jesse Ventura. Oh, yeah. And, you know, uh, w with politics, I mean, if I had to really, first of all, I hate the idea uh, of, of teams, right? Mm -hmm. Team red, team blue. Mm -hmm. I think we should all think objectively the way we were thinking with JFK. But... Jesse Ventura was just so awesome because he's, I mean, you think you're obsessed. He was, mm -hmm. he's totally uh, obsessed yep. uh, with, with this, uh, this whole thing. several shows, yeah. Uh, but first off, little quick background for those uh, who don't know. Uh, man, I love that. I was trying to find an embarrassing picture of you. Impossible. You're <laughs> clean as hell I, uh, uh, online. Yeah, I and don't, I don't live except, that except there, there's a there's a loophole. There's a what was the the high school that you went to before uh, college? Saint something? Saint Lawrence. Saint so Lawrence so uh, something comes up with like a, a yearbook picture of you, but you can't see it. You Saint Lawrence is still making money off of you. You have to pay. They shut down. You know they did, they closed really? last year. The, the the Catholic diocese closed. Them down. Oh, that's unfortunate. But uh, yeah, no, we have a couple of yearbook photos there, and I still have those yearbooks right at home. Sorry, guys, if I look distracted, I told myself I wouldn't do this and be a good <laughs> listener, but uh, I want to just make sure we're recording because that would be a bummer sure. if we uh, lost this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah, want yeah. to lose it. Uh, so quickly, um, Kat, my uncle just joined. Uh, I remember Kat and, and that uh, Noel. Oh, Catherine, yeah. Yes. And, I remember uh, Catherine Yumo, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I can remember some of these things. Of course, I taught you guys three years. <laughs> so I really, now I only teach the kids for like four months a semester. Really? And, because, you know, sometimes we switch teachers from econ to gov. Are you guys still doing crazy stuff like that, man? Uh, we do that. Some of it, well, for AP, because I don't do AP econ. Okay. So they have to go to another teacher for that. So oh, I either have the kids for just one year or maybe half a year. But your class, I taught you English yes, you two, did. and then uh, AP U.S. History and then Gov. So I had you guys for two and a half years. So I'm never going to be as close to students or know them as well as the class of Cat 05 says, and 06. LOL. Hi. Uh, but yeah, yeah, American Gov History was, was way cooler um, to me. I'm, I'm uh, looking in the background, I'll show you guys later, of uh, a, God, I love this stuff, a photo of uh, Tiananmen Square. 1989, the tanks. Could you explain that to me? Because I won't explain it right. Yeah, well, that was uh, during the uh, democracy protests back in, I think it was June of 89, when the students uh, of China, you know, the brightest students, the best university students, 
were demonstrating for more freedom. This was during when, the, when Gorbachev was around and communism was falling in, in Europe. And they wanted more freedom. And I believe they built like a, a goddess of democracy, like the Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm. And they were mm -hmm. quoting Thomas Jefferson. And of course, uh, the Chinese government uh, said no way. But before they put the tanks in and, and ran over them, uh, that night, you know, they tried to bring in these tanks and this one little guy, this one Chinese guy stood in front of the tanks mm -hmm. and they, they stopped and they went around him and his friends grabbed him and took him away. We never know his name. But, but, but it was such a powerful picture, a picture. and message the of, power of, the of defiance. Of defiance and how one person, at least temporarily, could stop the tanks. Now, you, we, you think it has to do with culture? I mean, I'm Asian technically too. Mm -hmm. Sure. But... Uh, there's still, you know, essentially a dictatorship over there. I, st oh, yeah. I stopped through and was wondering why it was a cheap flight, but then realized later it was the Great Firewall of China. Nobody wants to go through there. Oh. Un air conditioned, <laughs> huge Beijing air airports. I bet. Um, yeah. But, well, uh, do you think it has to do with c culture and rules that, that people don't talk openly the way we do and say, uh, this is absurd, you right, know? Right, Culture, well, I guess you further used to go, the more context, right? Okay. Right. Well, I mean, uh, in, in the case of China, they are still a political dictatorship. Economically, they're free, mm -hmm. right? They, they, want, they are capitalist as hell. They want to make as much money as possible. Mm -hmm. So the question is, like Lincoln said, can you be half free and half slave? Mm -hmm. Economically, they're free to make money, but they're not free to express themselves to vote, to have opposition parties, more than just the Communist Party. Right. So can you be half free and, uh, and half slave? And we are betting that over time, mm -hmm. the Chinese will want to be totally free. Right. Um, the younger crowd generation? As the older ge Communist generation dies off, so they say. we hope that the younger generation will right. change things. But, you know, we've been predicting this now for 40 years. It hasn't exactly. Happened. So is so, change going to happen today? I, uh, you know, not Gen X, Gen Y, etc. Right. But the fact that they don't is why exactly why I asked the question of, do you think it's a context of culture, well, part, uh, of being rebellious, being defiant? Yes. Well, certainly dominant? Asian culture is more respectful of authority, especially elderly people and so forth. So that, that is, they're not going to be as, as wild and rebellious as the West, let's right. say. But at some point, you know, you're going to want to have more choices in your life than just the Communist Party, right? And I think at some point they will... children. Exactly. They will have to change to compete. India, in many ways, has almost as many people, right? Over a billion. Mm -hmm. But India is a democracy. They have different parties. They were taught by the British. So if I was an investor, I would put all my money in India because mm -hmm. India... See, someday China could explode mm -hmm. because they are repressed politically. Mm -hmm. Where and I would not want to put That's the my only money, reason they don't. I, I wouldn't want to put my money in China because no maybe ten, twenty years from now the whole thing is going to blow up. Yeah. I would think India is a much safer investment. I was talking to a, a top producing agent, and I think that's one of the reasons that people are investing from China so much here. Oh yeah, is because they're capped to two kids, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, you probably know better than me. It was either five hundred thousand or fifty thousand. They're not allowed to have more. Right. Did right. You, and, yeah. There's some. There's some figure. It, and so, it can, it's fungible too. If you have connections, you can go higher. Right. And, and that's the scary thing for them. So they think they're okay, coming over here, well, investing here. I, things can change overnight here. I can even lose that. Yep. Um, if I'm smart. What they're doing is they're literally wanting to invest, buying houses in Palo Alto that are oh, and empty. They, buy, they never even live in there. They buy but, with cash. They yes, come with cash liquid money. cash, especially in Vancouver. But um, and, and Jeremy, I saw your comments. I, I couldn't read that, buddy. I'll make sure I uh, I repeat that. Show that, Mr. Fanchulo. Um, but yeah, so uh, and, and that's the biggest thing with them is they're buying it empty. But why are they buying it? I think it's uh, because well, it's investment hedge against the future. It, it, hedge against the future, diversity. Uh, if the worst case scenario was to ever happen, and of course we benefit from that. But who well, loses from that? China, China loses from that. Well, yeah, um, there's a there, there's a money drain at some point. But that's what I tried to teach the kids. And, you know, now in government, we're starting to uh, study the Constitution, and I say, you know, this is the same government and Constitution today in 2017 that was written in 1787. And no other country can make that claim. You know, the Russians, the Cubans, the Chinese, the Indians, the Germans, the Japanese have all had new constitutions. The French. This is why I love him and this is why I wanted him on so We bad. are stable. We're gonna do like three with you. Okay, sorry, <laughs> that's okay. We're, we're stable. We are the safest bet, okay? And that's why people wanna come here. You right. wanna live here with, even with all our problems and all our dysfunction, 
uh, we are still the safest bet to live and to put your money if you're going to invest here or put your park your money somewhere in the world. We're better than the United States. I mean, mm. that's really the secret of our success. So. Essentially, as long as we up, uh, uphold that, um, and yeah, people think that time changes, uh, that the uh, Constitution uh, should change. I slightly agree. I'm torn halfway. Well, you can't change what? it. You have yeah. amendments, well, right? Exactly. But it's, and there has been. There but, but as I, uh, you know, I'm going to go over this next week, it's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy to change the Constitution. You, you shouldn't change it on a whim. It should be. It should be very specific objective. and objective, and you you can only do it when you have overwhelming support, 75, 80 percent of the people. So, like when we wanted to lower the voting age from 21 to 18, because mm -hmm. kids were going to Vietnam at the age of 18, mm -hmm. we said, "Well, that's not fair," and pretty much everybody agreed. And man, we changed the constitution. I think it took seven months. Right. Whereas, you know, with the um, times, with the times, JFK always said, "Change is the law of life." Well, my favorite quote. Change is part of life. Yeah. If, if you try to stop change, you're going to go crazy because it's just part of existence. Right. But you want to control the change and manage it mm -hmm. so that you don't lose what you have and make things worse. Right. But you can't change the Constitution if, like, you know, when I was teaching you, Bush was president and he said, hey, you know, vote for me and we'll get a, an amendment to ban gay marriage. Well, that was what most people wanted, 60%. But mm -hmm. that's not enough. Right. And Hamilton and Madison knew that. It's almost insane for him to make that statement. It was because all he's, politics. He's got to convince everyone else. Yeah. Right. But people often often do that for you're you're in charge of elections here. You're elected. Uh, yeah. Uh, especially, but to get elected, and then later once they do get elected, he knew it would never um, happen. They they would never do it. But at that point, it's um, they're selling. It's value propositions. What can I give? Of what I can do? And they have those idiots. Get me through the election. They have those yeah. idiot PR people they're listening to, right? This is background. what people want to hear. Yeah. Um, the pollsters. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, for uh, First Amendment, I learned, you know, from Jesse Ventura that it was designed not to protect popular speech, no, yeah. but unpopular speech. I, I was talking to Johnny Comis, the city city council member. And oh, I Johnny, going I met into, him. Yeah. Oh, you met him. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I started uh, going into this with him, but we have to understand. And this sounds controversial. These are my my views. Is there's bad things that come with that too? There's sacrifices we have to to make. None of us like the KKK. None of us are for. The KKK, but we have to understand if we They're accept, Americans too. They have if we right accept that it's our First Amendment right, mm -hmm. and a hundred percent, I'm against that. Mm -hmm. But I will also fight to protect the fact that as long as they're doing it peacefully, peacefully yeah. as long as they're not hurting anybody, um, that uh, they are allowed to exercise their First Amendment right. But the minute we start making limitations, it's black and white, right? It goes both we, ways. We, we can't have everything, right? But the minute we start making exceptions, saying that. Oh, you can say whatever you want, except mm -hmm. you can't say this. There's no exception you in the First Amendment. Yeah, yeah, you can't say that. As soon as we do that, and that's the thing is people start to get uh, you know, offended when they're think, not thinking objectively. They're like, well, why are the cops standing here at this rally protecting them? Mm -hmm. They're just protecting But But someone who studies government, studies history, understands that, uh, no, let them say what they and want. It, it, they're just, not going to get their way. Them, right? Don't, you, they're uh, not going to persuade anybody. No, not at all. So, but we cannot, you cannot say... Hey, police officer, why aren't you doing something and getting them at, out of there? Because that is what we fought so hard to mm -hmm. protect. Right? Well, it's, and, and that's tough for some people to deal with, and especially our youth. The First Amendment, well, yes, because I mean, I mean, many young people today are unfortunately, I think, taught mm -hmm. that in, nothing should ever bother them. You know, if you hear something that upsets you, that's illegal, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. America is supposed to be uncomfortable. You're supposed to hear and see things it's a culture that of upset you. Yes. But then you have the right to uh, uh, argue back, and mm -hmm. then we get to decide for ourselves what we want to believe. And that makes I mean, us better. And, Ask somebody in China. Well, they you, would, you don't even go to China, Roman. Go to Canada. Okay. In Canada, I would go to jail, and a man did go to jail, this was several years ago, for saying, publicly, <clears throat> it's against the law in Canada, to deny the Holocaust. The Holocaust never happened. Hitler never killed any Jews. They're making it up. Mm. That was one year in jail. Now, isn't it better in America to have the First Amendment and have the guy say that. I don't want to lock him up because he's stupid or mm -hmm. because he mm -hmm. says that. Mm -hmm. Let him say his thing, and then we can just say, okay, man, we've heard you. You're an idiot, and we're going to ignore you and move on rather than lock him up and make him a celebrity and give him all this mm -hmm. all this stuff. I mean, that's just crazy, you know? Right, right, right. So, um, can, can I say for one second for everybody who's listening that I just wanted to say thank you and you're the reason that I am how I am. Call me cuckoo, call me whatever, but 
uh, when we started going into JFK, when we started talking about all those things that uh, may quote unquote not be politically correct for the curriculum of the official stupid, version. stupid ideas like the high school exit uh, e exam. Which is gone um, now. Yeah. It was the first time that I wasn't falling asleep in class because um, it was real, right? It was real things that we deal with. And uh, I think for any parent listening, uh, any decision maker listening, you are more than lucky to have a guy like David Fanchulo because uh, the most important thing is expanding these kids' minds, their imaginations. And if you limit them and constrict them because you're afraid of what might be offensive, uh, you're not giving them a realistic setup for what the world is like, first of all. You're, you're hurting them, right? Because they're going to get punched in the face as soon as... And, and by the way, my views of my own, Mr. Pancho, are, are they own. We don't rep represent the school or anything. Disclaimer. See, I hate I have to say that. That's yeah. BS. Uh, Legally, but, though, you got to protect yes, yourself. Right uh, now. But, but uh, I feel that like that is so important because one of these kids, realistically might end up being a, a significant leader in this well, classroom. It's interesting you say and that. if it's one out of 90 that you came across, it was worth it. Well, I had a kid just graduate this um, this past year, 20, 2017, Indian kid, and he, would, I, he and I would argue in class over politics <clears throat> somewhat. And then I got an email from his father just before graduation this past May where he mm. said, hey, he goes, I just want to thank you. He goes, I talk with my son now almost every day at breakfast table or dinner table about Trump mm -hmm. and politics. And he goes, my son and I don't agree on everything. We kind of argue. But he said, you know, I'm glad that he has his own mind and that he can think for himself. That's what the purpose of school should be. 100%. And you helped him achieve that. So he said, I just wanted you to know that. That's wonderful. And that's, that makes me feel like I'm doing my job. And uh -huh. What you said to me was really great because... I never really thought about that. When I was in San Jose State training to be a teacher, they said, there were many teachers, would-be teachers, who said, I don't want to influence kids. I just want to teach my math or English. And I'm not a role model. And I'm not, I'm not here to influence kids. And I'll never forget what one of the professors said. Mm. He said, if you're a teacher, you're in the influencing business. Whether you want to be or not, you will influence those kids in ways that you can never know. Right. And that always stuck in the back of my head. And when I hear from somebody like you or somebody from Carol Nguyen in your class who changed her major, okay. she went from at Davis, she was going to be a vet, and then she became a teacher in part because of me. And I go, whoa, I said, I'm sorry, you're going to be poor. You should have been a vet. Carol, Carol will see this eventually, so that will mean a lot to her. Yeah. Uh, Gabby Chavez-Lopez just said, oh, yeah. one of my favorite teachers ever, changed my life. I remember Gabby uh, very well. well. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Gabby. Um, but yeah, th this is why it's so important. And it wasn't easy getting uh, this guy. Okay, I had to yeah, ask yeah. him how persistent I was, uh, but <laughs> I knew that it would, uh, it, it would be... Uh, great for you guys. I knew this would happen. I uh, got 100 questions, we're not going to get to anyone, but that's okay. Well, I'm Mr. Fenshaw. We can do it again. I mean, uh, we yes, will. yes, yes. Time. We'll work around real it. quick for the parents watching, uh, after that, you went to Santa Clara University. Did you do, uh, what did you study there? Uh, well, my, my uh, major Probably was poli sci. Yeah. Uh, I wish, I, if they had had communications, I would have done that. Um, but they didn't have a communications degree at that time. Now they do. Because I was always, my dream was to be a journalist, to write for newspapers, nice. which, you know, newspapers, the old-fashioned newspapers are pretty much gone. What's going to happen now, yeah. But every, everything's online, right? But, yeah. um, so that's what I would do if that. I did, I did work as a writer for many years, so I got to, and that opened a great world, which is why I love and stress writing and communication. Because no matter how technical and all this cameras and all the video becomes, you still have to be able to talk. You still got to be able to write. You still got to be able to communicate your message and ideas. So uh, that's and you can blab the way I blab, but when you're forced to put it down on paper, it's it a becomes, different beast. It's a different beast, hmm. and, and it, you start to become constructive. And that but in turn, it's worse, right? Yeah, in turn, yeah. when you speak again, uh, it's actually better, right? Yes, yes it's, exactly. It's weird how the more um, you do it, the better you'll get. And so that's my job as a teacher in all my classes, no matter what subject I'm doing. In addition to teaching the content. I'm trying to com teach these kids how to be a little bit better speaker and writer. And if I can do that mm -hmm. over the course of a semester, then I think I've done my job. I think I've done something valuable. Right. Gabby said thank you for doing this, Roman. No worries. You guys remember that sound? Yeah. Sen you sent yeah, just, uh, just join, join yeah. as well. Uh, man, it sucks that we're going to have to... Uh, wrap the, this. Up. And we could go on for hours. Oh, we could, we could. Oh, one of these, you know, one of these days, I'm gonna have to come back and talk more about JFK, right? Miss American Amer Pie. Miss American Pie. And I was gonna talk so, about the Sweden experiment uh, as well. We'll talk about Miss Fanchula, but sorry, the kids are gonna be running in. Uh, I should have been earlier, but.
We'll this do it. We'll set Roman off a block of time. David Fanchulo, and this is one that's mandatory. We're going to have to do a second uh, and third. And uh, now Ms. Fanchulo knows how important it is because, hey, we can hold 20 seminars or we can do one of these and, you know, affect so many people. And that same dad that messaged you, um, mm -hmm. he'll be able to go on YouTube before he chooses between that private school and whether to put his son here. And I guarantee when he hears Mr. Fanchulo uh, talk, uh, those are the type of things. Uh, and, and again, last thing, millennials, debate is so healthy. Keep debating. And you can do it calmly. You can do it nicely. Rationally. You can do it rationally. And you're you're only going to be a great debater if you can argue the side that you don't even believe exactly. in. Exactly. Be like a that, good lawyer. A good yep. lawyer can argue I learned that at San, San Francisco State, and that's what made me. But Mr. Franchulo were the roots that kind of sparked this amount of thinking uh, for me. And right when I get out of here, I'm going to go across with some of his posters that I love. But uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, Rachel, you're going to have to make it for number two. You should just Rachel Perkins just... Join, oh. but uh, kids are going to start knocking on the door now, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah they'll be coming okay. in any minute. Okay, well, we got to go. Uh, a second. Peace, love. Peace I promise I'll have Mr. Fanchulo again. I know he's going to be high demand, uh, uh, but we'll cheers, guys. Look forward to it. This was fun. I enjoyed it. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. I knew you were Mr. Uh, Fanchulo. And that was great. You're more than me. Yeah, that was great.